Here's where it begins. I'll just show you the first one, and then really the rest of them kind of follow the similar sort of pattern. I think from memory it's this. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I'm on the right page. Okay, so when you look at this, the first thing your brain does is just kind of explode a little bit. Because you know, this does not fit in the categories of what I'm used to working with. Okay? Um, you could try and make why the subject, but then you kind of end up with, like, it's a bit of a mess, really. Like, I don't really know what to do with this. Until you remember, actually it does fit into a category that we've seen before. It's just that we didn't meet it in the context of this question, which is to graph. Okay? We met it in the context of trying to generate a general solution for something like this. Um, I think I gave you this. Okay, this is like one of the first examples we did in general solutions, right? But to try and get towards something which was easier, uh, more formulaic to work with, I said, look, this is really this. Uh, what is it? It's pi on three, right? And so wherever you've got cos something, cos something, right? You can use the general solution because every time these two lines intersect, this guy going up and down and up and down, and this guy just going flatlining, right? These are going to be all of your solutions. So we understand that. Okay? Now this same idea I can apply over here. Because again, I've got cause something, cause something. We're just kind of weeding out a little bit because one of them is a variable and it's a different variable. But that's all right, don't panic. I'm going to start in just the same way that I started over there, which is to say there should be many, many solutions to this, right? Multiple solutions. And there will be at every even multiple of pi, okay? Now, whatever that means in this context, what happens on the end? What, how does this formula end up? Finished. Plus or minus. Yeah, so I had pi on 3 over there. Now, the angle I'm dealing with is x. Now, I've done like the, the algebra, I've used the formula, but what does it mean? I don't know what it means yet. What I want to point out is, and I should be um, technically correct, I've been a bit lazy doing this. What I just wrote is shorthand. It's shorthand in two ways, right? Because we know how much mathematicians love to take long sort of sentences and verbs and all that kind of thing and boil it down to symbols that mean, you know, as, as be as economical as possible. This M, right, what it really stands for is not just a number, not just an integer, it stands for all of the integers, right? And that's why this is the general solution. It's a list, really, of all of the different multiples of two pi, okay? So this really means, okay, you know what? Whatever this stands for, you've got an infinite bunch of them, okay? And they happen every two pi. So there'll be a two pi version, a four pi version, a six pi version, and so on. There's another piece of shorthand in my equation. What is it? It's, there's not much else left, is there? There's the plus or minus, right? Which is itself shorthand for this. 2n pi, there's a negative case. And 2n pi, there's a positive case. Yeah? So now what I've got is, for starters, the 2n pi tells me I've got an infinite list of things. Okay? And then the plus or minus tells me, hey, actually, I've got two infinite lists of things. Okay? So what do these look like? Just like before, when I said, okay, this is what your general solution is, but what are the actual, like, what are the values that are in here? Uh, well, in this case, the first one would be n equals zero, which is pi on three. What would the next one be? For n equals one. I'm, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to do because again, this is two lists, right? Um, for n equals one, it's two pi plus that, which is seven pi on three, and then there's thirteen pi on three, and so on. There's the positive list, and then I'll have the negative list, which is Negative pi on 3, uh, 5 pi on 3, and so on. Okay, so good. So in the same way that I'm like, yeah, this is weird. It's very abstract. This is what it really means. This is weird. And this is abstract. So what does it really mean? Well, just like I did over here, let's list out these solutions. Okay, we'll do the positive case first, just like I did here. Then we'll do the negative one. If I'm looking at the positive case, which is this guy, let's think about n equals 0 first. y equals 0 pi plus x. y equals x. I don't know what that looks like. There we go. Case number 1. Next, n equals 1, so y equals 2 pi plus x. That looks like just this guy, but shifted up 2 pi units. Okay? 
towards the next one. You're starting to get a pattern, right? Aren't you? This is n equals 2, so it's going to be 4 pi plus x. So that's going to... There we go. Let's see how consistent I can be. And of course, this is also going to go off in the negative direction because there's no reason why I can't put in n equals less than 0. So I'm going to get these guys as well. Okay? So here are all of these guys. Well, sorry, all of these guys. Here are five of them, okay? And these go on forever. Those are the positive cases. Now I do the negative ones. What's the difference? What's the difference? Yeah, it's just the gradient, right? Um, I mean, just think about y equals mx plus b form. All the y-intercepts, the b's, are the same. Still getting 0, 2 pi, 4 pi. All that's different is that I'm going down at a gradient of negative 1. So I'm going to get these guys. Uh, let's see. That one, and that one, and that one, and all the rest of their friends. Okay? So, yeah, yeah, it's weird. However, just thinking through, like, what did we need to know to do that? We needed to recognize this was happening. It's not obvious at all, okay? Um, just like when you look at an integral and you're like, I mean, uh, there's supposed to be some substitution or some identity, but what is it? Well, if we remember this, then we can say, yeah, all right, I can deal with that then you have to unpack what on earth that means, right? Which is this. We first tried to use that just for solutions, right? But in this context, you can see it works in coordinate geometry as well with spectacular results, okay? So do you see how I stepped yeah. through it? Um, now that you've seen this, it's like, okay, this is not that complicated. Yeah. If I were to say do something like this, oh. how could I take a problem like that and use that to my advantage when solving this. Sine x equals cos Yeah, like this, I, I know what happens when I've got cos cos, right? So if I can take advantage of that, I'll write this as cos of the complement, which is ion 2 minus that. And then I'm just going to proceed the way I did before. Um, the differences are going to be, I'm going to have a shift here, and some things are going to be maybe facing this way when before they were facing that way. And that's the only difference, okay? So I expect it will look like this, but with some shift involved, some translation, okay?